What do Dave Matthews, Tracy Chapman, and Lowell George all have in common? They all play different types of music, but they all understand the power of thirds, and they all understood how to use this in their songwriting. So today we're going to go over how Dave Matthews used this in Trippin' Billy's, Tracy Chapman used this in Fast Car, and Lowell George used this in Willin' by Little Feet. So they wrote songs with thirds. So instead of playing the full chords, they played thirds. So I want to go into how you can use this in your own songwriting or your own ideas and show you how they used it in theirs. And I'm going to show you how this will help you drastically improve your left hand muting technique. And then I've used this in songwriting before. So at the end of this video, I just want to play you an original that I wrote with this technique or this idea. And hopefully that inspires you to write your own songs or incorporate this into your playing. So let's jump right into Dave Matthews' Trippin' Billies. It goes like this. So that song is all major chords, but these chords are just ones and threes, so that's why they're thirds. And you can do this with major or minor, but this example is just major chords. I'll show you how you can make this in the minor chords as well. But if we were going to play that song with just the major chords, it would go like this. And that doesn't have the same feel. It wouldn't have been a hit if it was written like that. So what Dave does here, and he does this in a lot of songs, is instead of playing the full chord, which a chord is constructed with a one, a three, and a five. So if it's a major chord, it's a one, a major third, and a five. And if it's a minor chord, it's a one, a minor third, and a five. So if you have this chord right here, the six string bar chord, and you just take off your you stop barring everything, so you're just fretting the first fret on the low E string, and then you can take off your ring and your pinky finger, and then your middle finger would be left on the second fret of that G string. So you're always going to be playing this chords if it's if it's rooted on the low E string, then your third is always going to be on the G string. So this is an F major chord or an F3 chord. So if you're playing an a power chord, it's called an F5 chord because it's a one and a five. So this would be an F3 chord. And then what you're doing, why this is so good with your with your left hand muting is that you need to rest your index finger across the string so that you're muting all the other strings. And I like to play this instead of with my middle finger, which you could do. I find it easier to mute all the strings with my index finger if I play this with my ring finger on the G string. Mm -hmm. So you just want to hover that index finger over and just fret that first fret on the low E string. And then it goes to a G chord, same shape, and then it goes up to a B flat chord, which is now on the sixth fret, and then fifth fret, which would be an A chord, and then back to F and back to G. So that's all major chords and it gives it a really cool melody, a cool sound that you don't get from just your typical basic chords. And if you were going to make this into minor, so we have, a, we have a G major right here, say you had a chord progression that was like G major to A minor. You'd have a G major like this, well your A minor is going to look like this. So all you do here, this would be an A major, all you do is flatten that ring finger down one fret, so now both of your fingers are fretting the fifth fret. And this is totally movable. So this is an A minor, G minor, F minor, B minor, and then all you have to do is just move that finger over to make these into major chords. So B major, A major, G major, F major. If you're enjoying this video, then please like and subscribe. So these are really cool ideas and they sound great and it sounds full because you're getting all that raking from the muted strings. They still sound like full chords even though they're really only two notes. So it's a cool idea and, and Dave uses this a lot and then 
Tracy Chapman used it too in Fast Car, and this is a finger picking song, and this is just a beautiful song, and it goes like this. And what's going on here is these are just basic chords at the root of them. So it's a it's a C to a G to an E minor to a D. But if it was just played like that, it wouldn't have the same sound to it. It also might not have been a hit. You never know. So what's going on here is your C chord, you're, you're doing this little hammer on with your index finger. And then you're playing your G chord. So nothing too fancy there, but once you come up here, now you're, you're taking a shape out of your fifth string rooted bar chord, and you're playing an E minor like this. And what that is, you got your, your index finger on the seventh fret of the A string, and you got your ring finger down here on the eighth fret of your B string. And that gives you an E minor chord. So this next chord is a D and it's more thirds. And this, we're utilizing the open string here, but you could visualize it like this, where you also have a D here instead of using the, the fourth string open, which is a D. You can use it here. And then, She's picking that third and then that open G string, which is your fourth of your D chord. So you're, you're like, it's a sus four at that point. But you don't need to worry about that. The real idea is these thirds and how, how beautiful they sound. That song really wouldn't have the same melody and the same sound if they were just playing basic chords on that one. And I do know that that song is supposed to be capoed at the second fret. So... Don't beat me up too bad for that one. But if you want to play it in the original key, put a capo on the second fret and it sounds a little nicer. And then let's move on to Willin' by Lowell George. So this is a great song. I got a little story for you on this one. So back in uh, about the winter of 2006, I was 15, 16 years old. My brother would drive us to school every day. Our father had just passed away. And my brother had this shitbox 1988 S10. This thing was like five different shades of gray from all the fading that had happened to it. Back then, those, those trucks didn't actually have heat in them, so the heat would be to open the vents so that the heat from the engine could just blow through. And we would be freezing on our way to school every morning, and he got the CD waiting for Columbus, or maybe it was a cassette, but I think he had a CD player installed in this shitty truck that he had. And we would drive that thing to school every day, listening to Willin' by Little Feet. And it was a really tough time in our life, but that is one of the fondest memories I have. Every time I hear that song, just driving to school, freezing our asses off, listening to Willin' by Little Feet. And this is how it goes. Do that again. So that's a great intro and it really just sets that whole song up for the, the feel of it, the sound of it. And what they're doing there is they're going with a G major chord right here because you have your G rooted here on your 10th fret and then you have this same shape that was in out of fast car and it's that B string on the 12th fret and then you're going down one fret on the A string so now you're playing an F sharp minor chord because your shape changed your ring finger went down two frets and then you're going to an E minor and then you're going to a D shape to a C shape and then it was just G C slide that C shape up to play a D, D sus 2 I think that is, back to a C, back to a G. 
And this shape is just based off of your fifth string rooted bar chords. So you remove those, the D and the G string, and then you're just playing your one and your three again. And then this is your, your minor, your minor shape. This wouldn't be the same either. So this is a super cool idea and you can really make some cool sounds. And you know, one great thing on guitar is trying to find new sounds. And especially if you're a songwriter, you can find new sounds and, and use this in your songwriting to make, a, make it have a whole different feel than if you're just using basic chords. And even if you're not a songwriter, you just want to use this to maybe, maybe work out a chord progression or something and just noodle over it. And you can do something like that. And you can take any basic chord progression and you can, you can do this with it. And now I just want to play you a song that I wrote called Always On Time. And I used, I used these chords in that entire song and let me know what you think about it in the comments. I remember playing in the back and not knowing that life could be hard. Now I wonder where those days went. Just living for the weekend I'm always early Or at least on time One of these days I'd like to be late Maybe I won't even show up at all I don't think I'm even gonna call Today I'm in need of another way Sometimes I feel like I'm wasting my days And I'm wishing my life away I'm in need of a change today I'm in need of another way Sometimes I feel like I'm wasting my days And I'm wishing my life away Sometimes I feel like I'm wasting my days and I'm wishing my life away. 